Enclisiran is a first in human small interfering RNA that works by inhibiting the translation of the message RNA for the PCSK9 protein in the liver cells using a recently discovered mechanism called the RNA silencing complex. Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wright, professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic, associate editor of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. And today I'm speaking to you as the first author of a new publication coming out in the August 2024 edition of Mayo Clinic Proceedings called The Effects of Enclisiran in Patients with Atherosclerotic Cardiovascular Disease, Pooled Analysis of the Orion 10 and 11 Randomized Clinical Trials. And we're very excited to have this article published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings and to share with you in this video the findings of this uh, amazing publication. The RNA silencing complex was discovered around 1999 by a group of investigators in Massachusetts who were ultimately awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine about 2005 or 6 for this discovery. And it often, it explains often how viral particles can influence mammalian cells. The RNA silencing complex has now been harnessed uh, to actually treat uh, disease processes, including amyloidosis and dyslipidemia by using targeted therapies now, which work through it to disrupt the translation of proteins or substances that either contribute to human disease or directly cause human disease. Um, Enclisiran is a very small uh, medication that's injected uh, typically on days one and 90, and then every six months thereafter for the duration of therapy and lowers cholesterol uh, in the preliminary studies by at least 50% in patients who are already on maximally tolerated oral lipid-lowering therapies. I've been involved in the uh, evaluation of enclisiran uh, for a number of years now, and um, it's been a very exciting journey to watch how effective it is at uh, working to lower LDL cholesterol. Now, as figure one shows that, uh, uh, that we've provided to the proceedings, uh, enclisiran, when administered subcutaneously in a vaccine-like injection that takes about two seconds to administer, is taken up directly into the liver because it has a carbohydrate moiety on it called galnec or inacetylgalactosamine. Galnec binds to the ASGPR receptor, which is expressed exclusively on the liver and has been uh, over a large number of years and centuries uh, in mammals. And it allows the targeting of therapy to the liver cell for any variety of disease processes. Now, enclisiran is then taken up by the liver, and this uh, small interfering RNA is a two-stranded compound with a sense and antisense strand. And its antisense strand then binds to the message RNA inside the RNA silencing complex where it works to effectively disrupt the translation of the message RNA for the PCSK9 protein. By disrupting that translation, the, the amount of PCSK9 in plasma falls precipitously. And it's about 80 plus percent with enclisiran at the approved dosing. And by doing that, it lowers plasma LDL cholesterol very potently and durably for a, a long time. Uh, and with infrequent injections, generally every six months, you can keep cholesterol reduced by about 50%. So we tested enclisiran in three large phase three placebo-controlled clinical trials called Orion 9, 10, and 11. Orion 10 and 11 included patients who had atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Orion 10 was conducted in the United States, and I was the principal investigator. Orion 11 was conducted in Europe uh, and in South Africa by my friend, Professor Cossack Ray from London. And we pooled the data together to look at the effectiveness in patients who had established cardiovascular disease to see, compared to placebo, how well it worked. Figure two shows the injection period for the placebo-controlled trial. Uh, patients were given either placebo or enclisiran injections on day one and then day 90, and then every six months thereafter uh, for a duration of 18 months. 
the primary endpoint of the Orion program was the percent of LDL lowering in Clisaran compared to placebo at day 510, and also the time average reduction of LDL lowering over the entire duration of the study between days 90 and day 540, so that we could see a time average reduction as well. 2,975 patients in the Orion 10 and 11 studies had uh, ASCVD, and so were included in this placebo uh, eclisiran uh, comparison analysis. What we saw is that uh, patients treated with eclisiran had a greater than 50% reduction in LDL uh, compared to placebo. You can see it uh, in figure three that was provided, there was very potent lowering out to day 510, and then the time average reduction also was quite effective compared to placebo. And in fact, the placebo group uh, saw a slight rise in LDL over time, which is not surprising, given that uh, there's always some dietary indiscretion and some non-compliance with oral lipid therapies. While the enclisiran group had a very durable response and uh, again, had a greater than 50% time average reduction over the 18 months of treatment. One of the more important questions we have, though, is illustrated in uh, figure four, which is how effective is enclisiran administration at helping clinicians today achieve an LDL threshold uh, for their patients, right? I mean, we know that in the past we've used LDL targets of 170, uh, depending on the degree of disease penetration for these patients, but now the LDL targets for treatment have changed such that nearly everyone with any kind of coronary artery disease diagnosis or even plaque on uh, CT scanning have a target LDL of 70. And those who have had a recent uh, acute coronary syndrome or have had uh, a stent or bypass surgery have an on-treatment target of 55 milligrams per deciliter for at least the first few years following those interventions. And so I wondered, and I think my fellow investigators wondered, can enclisiran help us get our patients to those new lower LDL thresholds compared to the old treatment methods of statins or statins plus azetamibe alone? And so this figure shows how effective the placebo group, which in this trial was patients on oral lipid-lowering therapy, statins or statin plus azetamibe or statins plus other oral lipid-lowering therapies versus enclisiran, which included treatment with those same lip oral lipid therapies plus the addition of enclisiran on days 1, 90, and then every six months thereafter. And so what you can see from this figure is that if an LDL target is 100 milligrams per deciliter, 90-plus uh, percent of patients can get there on statins alone, and we knew that, right? With statins or azetamide, we can get everyone to an LDL goal of 100, or so most people. With enclisiran, we got 97 percent of people to that goal, so no big surprise. But let's now look at the new thresholds that the latest guideline documents recommend of 70 for people with asymptomatic or mild disease and 55 or lower for those who've had recently unstable or more advanced disease. You can see that in the placebo group, again, which was just statins and statin plus azetamibe alone, only 38% or so of patients could get to an LDL of 70, and 12% of patients could get to an LDL of less than 55. So we're just not able with current oral lipid therapies to get most patients to the new LDL thresholds that we know are most effective at secondary prevention. With the addition of enclisiran, we got 93.5% of people to an LDL goal of less than 70 when enclisiran was added to oral lipid lowering therapy, and almost 90% of patients got to an LDL of less than 55 when enclisiran was added. So those are very promising data that with the addition of just a twice yearly injection on top of oral lipid lowering therapy, we can get almost everyone to those new very low LDL thresholds. Now, if you're wondering, because you're maybe more of a clinical trial purist, can enclisiran lower LDL by 50% and still achieve an LDL target of less than 70? The answer is yes, that 86% of patients in figure five, as we show, could get to an LDL of less than 70 with a greater than 50% reduction. And 82% of patients, or 83% really, could get to an LDL of less than 55 and also have a greater than 50% reduction in LDL. And when we looked at how many patients could get to an LDL of less than 40 
with a greater than 50% reduction, 67% did, so almost two out of three. So Inclisiran is very effective at lowering LDL cholesterol and helping our patients get to the, to the new thresholds that we want them to be at. So in summary, what we found with this study is that Inclisiran was very effective when added on top of the existing oral lipid lowering therapy to get patients with established cardiovascular disease to the new gu guideline directed goals that we all aim to get in our clinical practice. And it was done with amazing safety. There really was no safety signal that we saw in this uh, disease group that you can read about in the paper, other than a four or five or six percent who maybe had a small a bit of redness or itchiness at the site of the injection site uh, once or more during the 18 months of the placebo control trials. And if you're interested in more long-term safety of Inclisiran, we published uh, that data in uh, the December 23, 2023 edition of the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. And if you're wondering about even longer-term efficacy beyond 18 months, we've now published that in cardiovascular research. Uh, and looking at all patient populations, again, showing a very durable response. But we're grateful that the Mayo Clinic Proceedings uh, has published the, the data with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, and we believe that's especially important for the U.S. population, where that's what the label for Inclisiran indicates it is to be used for. So in summary, Inclisiran works on top of oral lipid lowering therapy. Almost every patient can get to a very low LDL threshold with a minimal concern for safety or any irritation or irritability. Thank you for your interest and I'll be, be happy to hear from you if you have questions or other uh, interest in Inclisiran or this study, feel free to write me at the email address uh, with this publication. We hope that you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mailclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel www.youtube.com Mayo Proceedings or journal updates on Facebook www.facebook.com Mayo Clinic Proceedings. You can also follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, available at Mayo Proceedings. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research, published by Elsevier Incorporated. All rights are reserved, including those for text and data mining, AI training, and similar technologies.